Hello, friends. I'm Heidi with Oni Go Stamping. Welcome to my craft corner. I am so excited that you are here with me tonight because I'm going to be sharing some of the new online exclusives, and I am totally wild about these. <laughs> I think that you will be too. So if you are here and joining me live, go ahead, leave me a comment. Let me know that you're joining me live. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know what you think of the online exclusives. Have you seen them yet? Have you not seen them yet? Do you need ideas? Throw it out there. <laughs> a special welcome to you as well. If you're watching this on replay, I love to know that you watched the replay. So leave me a comment. Let me know um, that you watched the replay. Let me know what you think of the online exclusives. So. Hello, Fonda from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome. I'm glad you are here. <laughs> so we're going to be looking at the new online exclusives tonight. I'm going to walk you through, give you a peek at what they are. I'm going to show you how to make a card. And then I have a bunch of more samples to show you. I have like six other samples to show you. So lots of great ideas on how to use these new stamp sets and dies. So lots of good stuff. <laughs> And I think the card that I'm going to show you, it uses so many, <laughs> so many of the new online exclusive products. It's just amazing. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn my cameras around and we're going to go ahead and get started. So let me see if I pick the right one tonight. Ooh, there we go. Flip you over. All right. So here is, well, this is part of the other one. This is the Rhino Ready stamp set. Aren't these rhinos adorable? Oh, I love them. <laughs> and this comes with the Rhino Ready dies, which here's the Rhino Ready dies. Really cute die set. There are dies that cut out the rhinos and then there's up extra dies to make more things. Let me show you. I pre-cut all these so you can see what they look like. So you love this set? Oh, me too. So there's a couple different trees and then the tops of the trees and like some bushes some leaves, a party hat. You can cut out the uh, the little party, I don't know, party horn. What are those called? You can cut out the little bird. You can cut out the three different rhinos and the grass as well. So lots of different options for doing lots of different things with this one. So that's the Rhino Ready bundle. And then we have the Tropical Leaf bundle, which comes with the Tropical Leaf stamp set. This is um, a photopolymer set. The Rhino Ready set is a cling set, so a little bit different. And then this, of course, comes with that punch. So really cool punch, really cool stamp set. And we're also going to look at the new Radiating Stitches dies. And these dies are so, so cool. They're so much fun. Um, so they only cut out the outside. I'm going to show you this. Let me show you. I pre-cut them. So like this big die right here just cuts out the outside and leaves those stitches around the outside. But then what you can do is you can take the next size down and these will actually go together right on your cut, cutting platform, on your die cutting platform. And you can put those right together and then that is going to cut out this frame. All right. So that's going to create a frame. And then the same thing is true with the next two. So you can take the medium size one and you can put the small one inside of it. And that will give you this frame down here, right? So you get this frame or this outside. And then the small one, you can't do that. It doesn't have that option. Um, it just creates that nice labely, I don't know, framed border, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> and then there's a circle and then the, there's a small circle too. So you can do the same thing with the circles, you can layer those together. And then there's a heart as well. So lots of cool stuff in here. Um, and lots of ways to use them too. So that is super fun. All right, those are the radiating stitches dies. So, all right, the other thing I'm gonna use tonight, we're gonna start with this, is I'm using some of the pattern paper, the designer series paper from the mini catalog. And this is the Like an Animal. I can't remember the name of it. I keep wanting to call it Into the Wild. This is Like an Animal <laughs> um, designer series paper. And you can see one side has animal prints with shiny metallics. The other side is just like flat. 
like animal prints, but really pretty in browns and grays. So super fun. This DSP is really good too. So it's going to work really well with this stamp set. Oh, hello, Heather. All right. So let's get stamping, shall we? I'm going to start. I'm actually going to pull out a piece of that paper. So I have a piece of that designer series paper. This is three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay. I'm going to start with a blending brush. I'm trying to decide which one I want to use. Maybe this one. Shall I use a little one? I think I'm going to start with a big one. And I'm going to use the gray granite and the basic gray stamp kit. I'm going to start with some basic gray. I'm just going to ink up my blending brush a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and tap that on my paper, kind of get some of that out. And I'm just going to add some basic gray in some different areas. Do that again. Oops, didn't tap that one out quite enough, but that's okay. As you can see, I have just added some basic gray to that. Okay, now I want to come back with my gray granite, and we're going to kind of do the same thing. I'm go ahead and kind of rub that out a little bit. I'm going to pick up some gray granite, tap that off, and I'm going to just come in here and kind of fill in between those big splotches I made with some of the lighter gray granite. And this is just going to give us kind of a uneven gray color, right? So it's not just flat. It's going to have like different, different shades in it, which I think is fun. So let me see, can you see that? I'm trying to decide if I want to do just a little bit more. Just blending this out. Just like that. And we just kind of get a modeled look to it. Hello, Kimberly, just to kind of give it a little bit more gray so it's not quite a stark white. So, all right, that was step number one. This, this card has a lot of steps in it. Just, you know, I like steps. All right, I'm gonna take a bonus piece of gray granite that I have here and I'm gonna start with the radiating stitches guys I have to think about the name of this one every time I don't know why I always want to say like radiant stitches but it's not it's radiating stitches <laughs> I'm going to set this up on my die cutting platform and we're just cutting this out of basic gray put another plate on top and run this through real quick Like that. So we get this nice basic gray rectangle with that fun stitching on the outside. I think it's so, oh, it's so cool. I love that little, little extra detail of having that stitching. I love it when the dies do that because then I feel like I don't need to layer them, right? It already has something around the outside. Give it a nice edge. I don't necessarily need to layer it. All right, so next, I want to do some embossing on here. I want to do some stamping and embossing. I'm going to use the stamp that says Built for Tough, or Your Built Tough. Um, and I'm going to emboss this on here. So I'm going to grab some scrap paper. And I'm going to grab my Versamark ink pad. I'm just going to ink this up with Versamark. And I'm going to grab my embossing buddy before I do this. And we're just going to run the embossing buddy yeah, over here. And try to get out some of the extra static. All right, ink up my stamp with Versamark. And I'm going to stamp this right at the bottom. And I'm going to emboss it in white. So, 
I'm not using the right color. Checking it against my sample, I think so. <laughs> Sometimes I get mixed up with the grays. Between the smoky slate and the gray granite. The smoky slate is a little bit cooler and the gray granite is a little bit warmer, but sometimes you don't realize and they're not right next to each other. You like these dyes? These dyes are awesome. I loved these. I think I'll use them on most of my samples that I'm going to show you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just heat this real quick. And let that embossing powder melt. Ooh, there it goes. I love embossing. I've been on an embossing course lately. I feel like I go through streaks. Like I won't emboss for a long time. And then suddenly I am embossing everything. <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to set this aside. These eventually are going to layer. I'm going to set that aside. And I want to do a little bit of stamping. I'm going to pull out some white. And I'm going to start with some tuxedo black memento and i'm going to stamp my little my little rhino on here so i'm going to ink him up oh my goodness i got little pieces i was doing some die cutting with some very fine dies earlier and so i used the adhesive sheet um, on the back of them which was good right they adhered but the problem was the little centers did not come out and the back of the adhesive sheet came off. And so then all those little centers were sticky. <laughs> and I was having a horrible time with them sticking everywhere. So, all right, I wanna stamp a couple of these big leaves and I'm gonna stamp them in granny apple green. I love these leaves. Now you always wanna look, right? You wanna take out your punch, you wanna look at it. Okay, we're gonna punch with the big part on the bottom or we're gonna, so we want to stay up with the big part on the bottom as well. All right. Get that nice and inky. Stamp that one. Oh, that is dark. I think I just re-inked my granny apple green. It's super dark now. All right. There's my two leaves because I want two leaves. And then there's like an inside veining for the leaves too. And I'm just going to do this in granny apple green too. I hope that this still shows up. Even though I just re-inked it and it's really, really dark. Usually though, you layer up the same color and it's still gonna show, which it does. Maybe not as much as it did on my sample card, but you can see it on there. So there's our big leaves from the Tropical Leaf stamp set. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, did I stamp those in dirty apple green? But I did. So I'm looking at the parakeet party and it's, it's definitely darker than the parakeet party. All right. I'm going to slide this in and I'm going to punch these two leaves out. I love this punch. It is so much fun. There we go. Here are those two leaves. And then I want to cut out my rhino. I'm going to cut them before I before I color them. Sometimes I go back and forth. It's a little bit easier to hold on to if you um, color them before you die cut them. But if you make a mistake die cutting, then you've wasted all your cut all your coloring. <laughs> so I might, you know, I change like every time. What do I want to do? I'm gonna go ahead and cut him. I'm gonna put a little washi on him. With these really fine images, I find they kind of, I don't know, you want to make sure that it really stays just where you want it. So I usually use a piece of washi to hold it in place. All right, we're going to cut out this rhino. He is adorable. He's looking at me like, hey, what's up? And I've seen some really cute samples where they didn't even color the rhinos. I was not successful. <laughs> was not successful at that. I thought, oh, I'm going to make some where I don't color the rhinos. And I don't know. They weren't working for me. So I colored my rhinos. So there's my little rhino. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. He 
he's just looking at me like, hey. <laughs> All right, so we're going to color him. I'm going to start with some um, light petal pink. And I'm just going to put that up here on his little cheek just to give him a little blush on his cheek. And then I'm going to pull in my gray granite stamp and blends. And I'm going to start with a dark. And I'm going to go over like the shadowy areas and where they've added lines in. Kind of around the toes. Just all here, just adding in that shading. I'm going to go over his tail because that's definitely going to be dark. I'm going to go under his head because you know there would be a shadow there. And under the side of that. And don't bring me that. Go here. And then we're going to go up here by his ears, a little bit under his eyes. All right. So there we go. I have some dark on there. <laughs> Lanny, you love the rhino. So there's the dark on our rhino. Now I'm going to go over this with the light and just blend that all in. This is the light gray granite. And just coloring over all those bits. Oh, I hope that gray granite does not disappear because it is my favorite gray. It is the gray I use all the time. And I'm gonna color over that pink on his cheek now. So I want it to be a little pink, but I don't want it to be a lot of pink. Do you guys use gray granite or am I the only one that loves gray granite? It is my go-to gray. I use it on everything. So I will be really, really sad if it retires. Uh, really, really sad if it retires. All right. Color up here, color in his eyes. I'm going to add a little bit to his horn. I'm going to go back over the underneath his horn a little bit. Then I'm going to come back in with the dark. Same here, use it all the time. And Kimberly, you do too. I know, like, please don't take my gray granite. Do not take that. There's lots of things you could take, but not the gray granite or the crumb cake. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over his tail again because I want that definitely to be darker. Up here. All right. Just kind of layering up that color until we kind of get the darkness that we want. And actually, I'm going to go over this again with a color lifter. So. So there's first, first roll on my little rhino. There he is. And now I'm going to take my color lifter and go over this gray. And this is going to make it kind of splotched. I'm going to start by going over his horn a little bit and just blending that in. But then I'm just going to go over my whole little rhino. And what this does with the gray, and some of the colors do this more than the others. It's going to kind of give it a splotchy look, which I think is great. Seems very rhino esque. All right. So I'll hold this up. It's still drying a little bit, so it'll do it a little bit more. But I don't know if you can see how that just kind of got like, it's like splotchy. <laughs> so. Oh, you got this the set yesterday, but you're sick with a cold. Oh no. So there we go. There's our little rhino. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do his little toenails. Gotta have toenails. Oh, you know what? I didn't do it in the sample. I don't know. Should I leave his toenails white or should I do some petal pink toenails? You guys let me know if I should leave them white or do some petal pink toenails. All right. What I'm going to do. This is going to go on here. I'm just setting this here so I can see where it goes. And then we're going to add 
some leaves. So, and these are going to be flat. So I'm going to grab my multi-purpose glue. If you like the white, go ahead. Honda, thank you. I'm glad you like my coloring. So I'm just putting these on with just a little bit of multi-purpose glue. Here's the first one. And we'll do the second one. Okay, everybody likes white like the horn. All right, we'll leave them white. You can see the other samples where he has some pink toenails. <laughs> All right. This is going to come in here. So there's our two leaves. Just like that. <laughs> you like my nail color? This is my uh this is my St. Patrick's Day nail color. You guys have big St. Patrick's Day plans for tomorrow? All right, I'm going to grab a length of the silver threaded twine because it's my favorite. <laughs> guys, I love the silver threaded twine. If you haven't tried this yet and you are like a fan of linen thread and you haven't tried this silver twine, try it because I like this more than the linen thread. So I'm just gonna pull out a piece of it. And the reason I like it more than the linen thread is I feel that it just holds its shape a little better. It doesn't do that thing where it tries to like roll over on itself. <laughs> the bows just seem to turn out nicer. So, and then of course now it's rolling over on itself, but still, it just has a little more a little more, hmm, I don't know, resistance to it. It's a little bit more shapeable. I just love it. Plus, it looks a little more rustic because it has more toothiness to it. All right, and it's going to go down here. Just kind of checking the size of my loop de doos Make sure they're what I want. That's looking pretty good. All right. You love the tip to throw, pull out the threads, literally. Like, I didn't like this stuff at first, and then once I started pulling out the threads, I now use it on everything. Use it on everything. All right, so I just used a little mini glue dot just in the center. And we'll pop that right in here. I think, let me double check. You know what? It's got to be over a little bit. That's what I was afraid of. There we go. I love that the mini glue dots, they're really super strong, but also you can pick them up and move them if you need to, as long as you do it right away. All right, so there's, there's that. Whew. On cost and no green beer. All right. It does make it tough. I am in a college town, so I'm just going to stay home <laughs> and stay away from the craziness that I'm sure will ensue. All right, I'm going to cut off this top edge because I want it to line up against the top of my designer series paper. So just coming in here and just going to slice right off that top because I want to make it look like it's coming over the top. So I put dimensionals on the bottom, okay? We got two little dimensionals on the bottom. And then I'm going to come in with my multi-purpose glue. And I'm going to put a little bit of multi-purpose glue up here at the top. So this, we'll put it up here. So it'll kind of like stick at the top. And then, and of course, I got got my dimensional right on my knot, which I never like. There we go. Or just pull off half the dimensional under there. It doesn't need to be there. <laughs> so by putting the glue at the top and those dimensionals at the bottom, it kind of makes it look like that tag is lifting up. It's come over the top and now it's lifting up. I'm going to trim this end. 
Now this is gonna get layered on a piece of basic white. So the basic white, so the designer series paper here was three and a half by four and three quarters. So the basic white is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And this, I'm just gonna adhere this right on here. So it's just gonna give us a nice little border. There's that. I'm making it pop. We're gonna add our little rhino on here with some dimensionals as well. We'll just pop some dimensionals on here. And then we'll pull the backs off. And we're gonna go right up here, right on there. Super cute. Still got a little bit more to do. So I have another piece of gray granite. This one is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I am gonna emboss this with one of the new embossing folders. So let's see if I can find all three of them. Another one of the online exclusives is the new basics embossing folders. And these are already on low inventory. So if you want these really, really cool 3D embossing folders, you want to order them soon because they're going to be out of inventory soon. I don't know if they'll be coming back or not. I hope so because they're really, really awesome. I'm going to use this crosshatch looking one. There's also big dots and then some flowers too. I'm going to use this one. Throughout my platform. I'm going to emboss this. This just kind of made me think of like the hide of something like a rhino. I, I'm assuming. I don't know that I've ever seen a rhino up close enough to be able to tell you exactly what their hide looks like. <laughs> but I'm assuming it's kind of got some texture, you know, like an elephant. Of course, this is not wanting to start through my machine. All right, I have to tighten the handle of my Big Shot. Oh yeah, lots of tightening to do. My Big Shot handle gets loose and then things don't wanna run through my Big Shot. So I tighten it up so I can get the tension correct. There we go. Right. <laughs> Hello, Leslie from Sydney. All right, so there is this beautiful pattern and I love both sides of it. Let me see if I can hold it up where you can see it. So that's like the raised up side that looks really cool. And then this is the side I'm gonna use tonight, which is the indented side, which I think looks like an animal. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna use. All right, this one is almost done. I have another piece of gray granite, eight and a half by five and a half, poured at four and a quarter. Now, don't forget, I have like six more samples to show you. I'm gonna do that. This is gonna go on here. And like I said, I'm putting the bumpy side down. So it's making lots of noise when I put that glue on. Don't both sides look really cool? So much fun. This is a great, just really, I don't know, really basic embossing holder. That's why I guess they're called basics and bossing holders. <laughs> but they come in a three pack, so it's kind of cool. All right, so there's that. And then this piece is going to go on the front. Just like this. There we go. And let's do an inside while I'm thinking about it, because what I love is that this says you're built tough. And then there is a stamp that says you're stronger than you think, which I think those just go together really well. So I'm just gonna stamp this for the inside of my card. And then I have a little strip of this. Just 
and I should have like done it at the same time and I totally forgot. We'll just add a little bit of color to that with what was left in my brush. And this is gonna go on the bottom, on the inside for a little bit more decoration in there. Great way to use your leftover strips of pattern paper. So there's that. And then I'm just gonna trim this off. Yeah, doesn't it really pop on it? But I feel like it doesn't necessarily like overwhelm the uh, the rhino either. It just kind of helps them stand out. Wait till you see some of the parakeet party cards I got. Ooh, they really pop. <laughs> All right. So this I'm just gonna put on the inside of my card. So we have you're built tough, you're stronger than you think. So just like that. Isn't it cute? So much fun. There we go. All right, let me show you my other samples because I have lots more samples. So here are some thank you, a thank you card that I did. And this is just with, is it a rhino or a chonky unicorn? I don't know. Apparently I have heard, somebody was telling me um, that, and if, if it's somebody who's watching tonight, let me know. Somebody said that they're in Germany and the German set, they miss, um, they mistranslated the title. And so it says unicorn instead of rhino, <laughs> which is funny. So maybe it's a chonky unicorn. <laughs> All right, so then we have this one in Parakeet Party. This is the tropical leaf, and we got three leaves on there. This is all that set. No rhinos on this one, just the tropical leaf. So, and I used the stems to make this lines, the stripes in the background. So really fun. All right, if you were here Tuesday, we did a cool color blocking card, and I just couldn't resist going back and doing it in some warm colors. So this is Daffodil Delight, Calypso Coral, melon mambo and pale papaya and these are the dyes those tree dyes from the rhino ready bundle and then this stamp is from the um kind and sincere stamp set i have to think about that one for a minute so isn't that fun i think that is just so so striking right this might be my card my favorite card i almost almost showed you how to make this one but then i decided to do the other one because it had the big tropical leaves on it too but this is just a rhino card and check out that rhino. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> so this uses a couple of those radiating stitches, dyes, <laughs> um, for the background. And then the trees, I cut them, I actually cut them out of white and I used a blending brush to add the color. So they're not, they don't have like an even color. It's a kind of a splotchy color, which I thought was really kind of fun. And the little birds, that's just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm in love with my own card. <laughs> All right, if you were here last week, we did the Joseph's coat, and this is the card I made during that um, that evening. So there's that one again, just to remind you, with all those leaves and our little rhino. And then I had to make a birthday card. So here is our rhino. <laughs> He has a little hat on and he has the little blower and like he has pink toenails. I should, maybe should say she. <laughs> but hope your birthday is wild. And then this, now this is that, um, the vellum that is in the mini catalog. And I actually took my blending brush and on the back of it, I added um, Parakeet Party to the back of this. And what it did is it just made this more green than it would if I hadn't done that. So just really cool. And then these, can you see how I cut out? You can see the depth on that, but this outside frame, I cut out the center and then I put this up on dimensional. So it's kind of like popped up um, and the, the rhino is popped up too. So it just kind of has a lot, of, a lot of little dimension on there. He does look like he's having the best time. <laughs> All right, and then here is my last one. It says, love you lots. This is with that tropical leaf set again. And here I inked it up, I inked up part of it in uh, Mango Melody. And then I inked up the rest in either Parakeet Party or down here it was 
um, Granny Apple Green. And I kind of used a blending brush to pop those colors and mix them in together to give you those multi-colored leaves. And I don't know if you can see the background. This is that floral embossing folder that I showed you earlier. That's part of the basics embossing folders. So really striking. Love those two colored leaves. So there we go. And I should have mentioned this earlier. I just had this bright idea tonight while I was sitting here. I was like, oh, I, have these, I have all these cards. I have like seven cards and I want to show how to make all of them. And I don't have time to do that. And I thought, well, what can I do? <laughs> so what I have decided is I'm going to sit down tonight. I think tonight, I'm going to do it right away tonight. I am going to make a um, seven card tutorial bundle with these cards. And if you order the, uh, either the Rhino, the Rhino Ready bundle from me or the Tropical Leaf bundle for me, from me, I'm going to send you the seven card tutorial bundle for free for use, to use with those, or I'm going to pop it over in my tutorial store. So if you order one of these two bundles from me, I'm going to send you that uh, really cool tutorial bundle for free. Um, otherwise, watch for it in my tutorial store. Hopefully, I'll have it up by tomorrow. So, because I just love these and I, I want to share more of them. <laughs> just like, you know how sometimes you make cards and you're like, oh my gosh, I just love my own cards. That's how I'm feeling tonight. <laughs> so, um, excuse me while I gush over my own card. <laughs> not very uh not very humble of me but anyway <laughs> I didn't draw the images I just made the cards so thank you all so much for joining me tonight I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did and uh, I will be back next week Tuesday with an awesome fun fold card for you and then next week Thursday we're gonna be using the on the ocean stamp set so I hope to see y'all next week have a fabulous St. Patrick's Day um and have a really great weekend too all right. Night-night.